Apache Spark is a relatively recent development in distributed systems and distributed data processing. It was designed to be an easier to use, faster and more general replacement for a system called MapReduce. MapReduce was an important early distributed processing system. Though not that early, it was invented in the last decade as well. Originally built at Google in order to perform data processing queries, such as building the search index of all web pages. The original MapReduce applications had to fit a rigid structure. It happened to be that this structure captures many common data processing tasks, so it's certainly worth learning, even though a more modern tool such as Apache Spark allows us greater flexibility. But the original MapReduce recipe really did enable a lot of important data processing applications. So here's how it went. First, each element in an input collection produced zero or more key value pairs. These intermediate key value pairs were generated in what was called the map step. Then, in the second step, all key value pairs that shared the same key were aggregated together. This was called the shuffle step. And finally, the values for a key are processed in sequence, perhaps aggregating all of the values. This generic recipe was designed in order to enable lots of different distributed data processing tasks. And some of the early applications were indexing web pages, training the language models that are used in speech recognizers and machine translation systems, and computing the page rank of different web pages, which was a ranking that indicated how useful a result page was regardless of the query. This algorithm was an early differentiator that made Google search results particularly useful relative to its competitors. So it's worth understanding the evaluation model and how to implement that in Apache Spark. In the map phase, some map function applies to all inputs, emitting these intermediate key value pairs. And the mapper yields zero or more key value pairs for each input. So let's say we wanted to count the vowels in this haiku, where each input is a line. The mapper would be applied independently to each line and would give us key value pairs where the keys were the vowels and the values were the counts of the vowels in that line. So we'd get these key value pairs for the first line, but the second and third lines would independently produce these sets of key value pairs. Now, in order to figure out the vowel count across all lines, we need to aggregate the values for each key. That's the purpose of the reduce phase. For each intermediate key, a vowel in this case, we apply a reducer function to accumulate all those values. All key value pairs with the same key are processed together, and the reducer yield zero or more values each associated with the intermediate key. So if I take all of the key value pairs here and group them by key, I can then apply the reducer, which in this case would just sum all of the values together to find that A had six occurrences in the original haiku. E has five, and likewise the reducer would be applied for I, O, and U to get the final vowel counts. So MapReduce was designed to carry out this map and reduce phase, but the programmer still had to define the map and reduce operations that would actually perform the computation. And that's exactly what's required in an Apache Spark application as well. Key value pairs are just two element Python tuples. So a collection of key value pairs is a collection of Python pairs. The following two functions, which are transformations on a resilient distributed dataset, actually implement 
the map and reduce phases that you see in the original MapReduce application. One's called flat map, and one's called reduce by key. They're both higher order functions that take another function. So for these call expressions, we have certain expectations about the data, the function input, the function output, and the result of calling flat map or reduce by key on that function. Flat map just takes any values. And the fn that's passed in takes one value at a time and produces zero or more key value pairs. The result of calling flat map gives you a collection of all the key value pairs returned by all of the calls to this function on each of the original values. Now let's look at reduce by key. That takes in key value pairs. The function that you pass in is a reducing function. It takes in two values and gives you one. That can be used to perform summations, etc. The result that you get by calling reduce by key applies the reduce function over and over again for all the values of each key and gives you back one key value pair for each unique key in the original data. Let's use these together in order to define a vowel counter. Now that I've started Spark, I can define the text file containing all of Shakespeare and assign that to data. Now data has a flat map method. In the example from the documentation, if we start with the numbers 2, 3, and 4, and write a function that produces a range for each input, then apply flat map, we don't get a sequence of ranges, but a collection of all the elements in all of those ranges. OK, so let's define a function, vowels, which takes in a line of text. And for every vowel in AEIOU, if it's the case that V is somewhere in the line, then we'll yield a pair, a key value pair, where V is the key, and the count of V in the line is the value. So the vowels in hello world are E once and O twice. Now if we take all of Shakespeare and flat map vowels over the whole thing, and then take the first 10 entries, it will tell us that it found A three times, then I three times, then O four times, then U three times, and then A another five times, and then E and then I and then O, etc. And it skips A here because there weren't any A's in the third line, just some E's. Now, in order to aggregate all these counts, we're going to use reduce by key, which is merges the values for each key using an associative reduce function. So for instance, we can add together all the values associated with the same key by just passing the add operation, where here it adds this one and this one together to say A appeared twice. Add is exactly what we want in this case as well. Instead of just taking the first few key value pairs from flat mapping vowels over Shakespeare, instead we'll reduce by key, using add as the reduce function, and then the collect the result, which performs the processing I described before and says that there are 233,000 A's in all of Shakespeare, much more popular than the U's but the E's have won the day. So the point of this example is to show how you would implement a map reduce style data processing flow where you go from original lines to collections of key value pairs and then group everything by key and reduce the results. This turns into a single line in Apache Spark that uses higher order functions in ways that should be familiar to you at this point in the course. So I told you what I was teaching you in this course was important. Here you see that higher order functions such as map and reduce are central to cutting edge research in computer systems.